Hi everybody, welcome back to our weekly live stream. My name is Alicia and today we're going to talk about everyday English idioms. I've chosen some very common idioms that we use a lot in American English. So today I'm going to talk about what these expressions mean and when and how you can use them in your everyday life too. So we have a lot of vocabulary to cover today. Uh, as I talk about these expressions, please feel free to make some sentences in the chat on YouTube or on Facebook, and I will try to check in real time. I, sorry if I can't catch yours, but please make sure to send lots of examples with this today. All right, it looks like Instagram has just started too. Hi, Instagram. Welcome back to our weekly live stream. Make sure if you are watching on Instagram, you can see everything on Facebook or YouTube, so please check that. And also, if you're watching on Instagram, sorry, I can't see your comments in real time. Okay, but I see some people are in the chat on YouTube and Facebook. Hi, everybody. I see on the YouTube chat, John and Andy, Person, Den, Jerry, Mahmood. Hello, everybody there. On Facebook, Jan, Jasmine, Sokam, Walla, Rafa, Fallen. Hello, everybody. Thank you very much for joining us. As I said, today's topic is everyday English idioms, everyday idioms that we can use at work, at school, uh, at your office, at wherever you go. These are very common um, and very convenient idioms, I think. We're going to begin in about two minutes or so. So as you join, please make sure to like the video and to share the video too so that other people can find it. I have two announcements as usual. First, I shared this on Instagram uh, and the Facebook uh, a couple days ago. This is a recent episode of Ask Alicia. We had a short break uh, to change a couple things, but we're back now. And I wanted to remind you, if you want to send questions, please make sure to send your questions to the official uh, submission page. That's at EnglishClass101.com slash ask hyphen Alicia. So if you want to submit your questions, please send them here. Also, if you have like an advanced question, please feel free to send that too. Like if you have a, a more complicated topic, please feel free to send your questions to the series and I will take a look. So we get a lot of questions that are very, very similar or we've talked about a few times already. So I'm totally happy to receive uh, more advanced questions too. So that's one. Second is that we have new PDFs available. This is one of them. I will show you a bit later. There are new PDFs uh, from the link below the video on YouTube and above the video on Facebook. <laughs> so if you're watching on Instagram, check the other one. Uh, so I'll show you those a little bit later, but if you don't want to wait, you can find them from the link uh, below or above the video. Okay, I see lots of people are joining us now. Fantastic. So I'm going to share the video and then I'm going to get started. So as I said, today we're going to practice lots of idioms. I'm going to introduce the meaning of the expression and then how you might use the expression. And then I'll try to check the chat to see your example sentences to see if you've used it correctly. Okay, so I will share the video and begin. Alrighty then. So let's begin then over here on the left side of the board with this expression that I think many of you know, to kill two birds with one stone, to kill two birds with one stone. I was just talking to Control Desk. Control Desk has a similar expression, uh, which is to kill two birds with one bullet. Okay, with one bullet. So this idea here, two birds, one stone, this means to do one task, like to take one action. In this case, the action is a stone. We say stone because a long time ago, like when hunting, we had we could throw, I guess, throw a stone, so stone means rock, and use it to kill an animal we were hunting, in this case, two birds. So to kill two birds with one stone means to achieve two things with one action, to achieve two things with one action. So you can use this at the office, for example. Maybe you have a meeting 
and the meeting is with someone you haven't seen for a long time. So you can maybe say, oh, I'm going to kill two birds with one stone. I'll catch up with this person and we'll meet about a specific topic. So to kill two birds with one stone means to achieve, <coughs> to achieve two things with one action. Two birds with one stone. So I think many people uh, are familiar with this expression, to kill two birds with one stone. So a good warm up one. Uh, and as I said, if you have an example sentence, please feel free to send that in the chat. I will try to check. Okay, the next one I use a lot on this channel and I use it a lot on like social media or to talk about uh, the things that we are doing here. To keep an eye out, to keep an eye out and usually the preposition that we use here, to keep an eye out for something, to keep an eye out for something. So I say like a, please keep an eye out for our next video or please keep an eye out for uh, the new series we're making. So please keep an eye out for means please watch carefully or please like wait carefully. So it's like something, something is coming, something is coming soon and I hope you are ready for it. So I want you to be ready for it. Please keep an eye out for our next video. Please keep an eye out for a new restaurant in the neighborhood. So please keep an eye out for means please look for. So this means like keep uh, one eye specifically. You might hear keep your eyes also in the plural form means like please use your eyes to watch carefully for something. Use your eyes to watch carefully for something. So keep an eye out for something. Okay. Uh, I don't see any examples yet, but uh, I will check throughout today's lesson. Let's go to the next one. This next one is maybe a little bit more uh, challenging to understand. Oh, sorry, uh, Black Cow Kim. Yes, you can use the plural form. Keep your eyes out for is also okay. Okay, um, so let's go to this next one. To add fuel, to add fuel to the fire. So fuel, what is fuel? Fuel is like the stuff you put in a car or another machine to make the car run. So gasoline or maybe petrol. So gasoline is an example of fuel. To add fuel to the fire, to add fuel to the fire. So fire, of course, fire is not a good situation. So fire is dangerous, fire is bad. So to add fuel to the fire means to add something else to the fire. It, begets, it gets bigger and bigger, in other words. So to add fuel to the fire, we always use the definite article here, not a. To add fuel to the fire means to make, to make, oh this is nice, to make a bad situation, to make a bad situation worse. To make a bad situation worse. So there's already a problem. And then when you add fuel to the fire, something happens or someone makes a decision that makes a bad situation an even bigger problem to add fuel to the fire. So we might use this in an example where like there's been a mistake in a project, but then uh, the leader of the project gets sick and we're like, oh no, this adds fuel to the fire. This makes the problem worse, to add fuel to the fire. Okay. Uh, Edgar on YouTube says, is this like teasing someone who's already angry? In that case, we have a different expression. So Edgar, I'll add one to today's list. To tease someone who is already angry, like you're doing it on purpose, uh, I'll add that down here. We have the expression to poke the bear, to poke the bear. So when you want to, for some reason, uh, tease somebody, so to tease someone means to make jokes or to kind of insult them, uh, you 
poke, poke is this motion, poke is this motion, and bear is the animal. So a bear is like an aggressive animal. So we use the expression to poke the bear when we want to tease somebody who is already upset or is already angry. So to add fuel to the fire usually describes a situation, specifically a situation. Okay, um, let's see other examples. Good, okay, I don't see other questions. So let's continue to the next one. The next one is to wrap your head around something. To wrap your head around something. To wrap, this verb, is used for like presents, yeah? So we cover a presence, we cover a box. Uh, this action is called wrapping, to wrap something. But uh, here, this expression, to wrap your head around something, like we cannot actually put our head around an object. This expression just means to understand something. To understand something. To understand something, usually something that is confusing. And we often use this expression in the negative form. Like, I can't wrap my head around why he made this decision. Or I can't wrap my head around why he wrote that message. So I can't understand that thing. So to wrap your head around something kind of makes it sound a little bit more uh, like uh, you're closer to the situation. It has a more casual feel about it. I can't wrap my head around this. So we often use this idiom in the negative form. I can't wrap my head around that. Okay, on to the next one. To call it a day. To call it a day. We use this expression at the end of the day, like when we are leaving the office or like we're leaving school. And we usually say, I'm gonna call it a day. I'm gonna call it a day. So to call it a day means to finish or to decide, to decide to finish, to decide to finish work, to decide to finish school. So maybe you've been working all day, you reach the stopping point in your work and you think, okay, I'm finished for today. I'm going to call it a day. So it here is today. So I'm going to say today, is done. Today is one day. I'm finished with the day. I'm going to call it a day. So we use this at the end of the day, usually when we leave work or we leave school or we leave uh, some place where we have responsibility of some kind. Okay, good. I don't see any questions yet. Some good examples are coming in about wrapping your head around something. Lily says, why aren't you wrapping your head around this? It's not your business. Oh, why are you wrapping your head around this? That one's a little, that means to understand. So uh, I, we wouldn't use this to mean no. Like in, in that case, maybe it seems like, why do you know that? Or how did you know that? It's not your business. We would use it in that way. We use wrap your head around something to try to understand something confusing. We do not use this expression for like um, asking why someone knows something or how someone knows something. Uh, yeah, dude guy, <laughs> funny name on uh, YouTube has a good uh, response to your answer. Uh, to butt your head into something, that's good for uh, your situation. Okay, on to the next one. Time's going quick. Last one, I have a beautiful visual for. <laughs> this is a rocket. The expression is, it's not rocket science. It's not rocket science. This expression means, it's not difficult. It's not difficult. So, why did we choose this expression? So, rocket science means science we need to use to launch a rocket, like to send a rocket to space, which is difficult. Or at least it has the, uh, we associate that, we think it's a difficult topic. So, it's not rocket science, is used when we kind of want to tease someone. 
and say, this really isn't difficult. You can do it. So for example, like sending an email. <laughs> it's maybe someone is having trouble sending an email and we want to tease them. Like, come on, it's not rocket science. So it's not a difficult task. You should be able to do this. It should be no problem. It's not rocket science. OK, it's not a big deal. All right, uh, so we'll end there for the first part. Whew, that was a lot of explanation. I got to go quickly in the next part. So we'll take one quick break. I will introduce now a couple of the new PDFs that I mentioned at the beginning of the lesson. We have ah, the other camera today. Cool. So I picked up, I think I showed this one last week a little bit. There are, I'll show you these two for now. This one I showed last week. Uh, this is the Talking Online PDF. This one has lots of internet phrases on the back here. So if you uh, like, if you see these online, this is what these common expressions mean. And then there are some other common phrases and questions you can use, as well as vocabulary words about the internet. This other one I wanted to show, this is leisure. It says leisure. This means hobbies. So talking about your hobbies. And then again, on the back is some extra vocabulary to help you express specifically your hobbies. So pick one of these up. You can choose one of these. There's a lot more too. So you can take a look at these. You can find these from the link below the video on YouTube or above the video on Facebook. If you're watching on Instagram, please check YouTube or Facebook. Okay. So with that, let's go to the next part. If you're just joining, today's topic is everyday English idioms. And please make sure to like and share the video if you haven't already so others can find it. All right, let's go to the next part. The next part is here. This one I also have a beautiful visual for. OK, so this next expression is to burn the candle at both ends, to burn the candle. This is my candle. You'll notice it's looking weird. So. To burn means like to have light something on fire and it gradually goes down like a candle, right? So usually when we burn a candle, it's at one end. So this is one end of a candle. This is the other end of a candle. To burn the candle at both ends, however, means uh, to work extremely hard. So it means to work hard, yes, but uh, usually uh, with negative effects. So yes, you're working hard, but because you're burning the candle at both ends, the candle, we, we imagine the candle as like your health, like your body's condition or your mental condition. So if you burn the candle at both ends, your mental or your like physical condition goes down very quickly. So there are negative effects to burning the candle at both ends. So maybe, for example, someone who's at the office like every night until 2 in the morning, they're burning the candle at both ends. Like they're working too hard. It's having a negative effect on their mental state or on their physical state to burn the candle at both ends, to burn the candle at both ends. Okay, good. On to the next one. To be in the dark. To be in the dark. So in the dark, we always use this the. We always use the definite article in the dark in this expression. So dark. Dark means there's no light. So like at nighttime, there is no light, there's no sunlight, there's nothing. This expression means to have no information. To have no information. So we use this expression when we want to share that we don't know something, but maybe other people do. So maybe you didn't check an email or you didn't get some information you need. So you can say, uh, I'm in the dark about the topic for today's meeting, or I'm in the dark about the plans for this weekend. What's going on? So I'm in the dark means I have no information. I don't know anything. I can't see anything. I'm in the dark in terms of information. Okay, 
Good. Some examples are coming in. Uh, I'm burning the candle at both ends, improving my English. Okay, but be careful because this is like, remember, there's kind of a feeling of a negative effect. Like it's a little bit too much, maybe. Uh, but good. Uh, there, I saw one more. Uh, ah, someone, I think Lily wrote, I'm burnt out right now. I'm burnt out. Yes, so burnout is a similar, uh, similar expression, which means I did too much. I did too much. Okay, on to the next one then. This one, to play devil's advocate. This is a really interesting expression with a really interesting history that I don't have time to talk about, I don't think. So let's look at just the meaning. To play. To play here does not mean like to have fun or like to go out and enjoy yourself. To play here refers to like an actor or an actress playing, meaning being in the role of. So to play devil's advocate. So the devil, like to give like a little image of it, the devil is like this bad, this bad creature, right? Evil creature. So devil's advocate. So an advocate is someone who works for someone else, like you're trying to convince someone of something for someone else. So in this case, if I make myself an example sentence, I say, I'm going to play devil's advocate. This expression means to argue against something, to argue against something, uh, for discussion purposes. So this is very, very common in business or in like any kind of debate or discussion to play devil's advocate. So this means I don't believe the question I'm asking you, but I'm going to ask you the question so that we can talk about it. So for example, if a friend shares an idea, a business idea with me, and she says, I want to create a bar, this is my concept, I might say, okay, I'm going to play devil's advocate here. So maybe I think it's a good idea, but we need to talk about all the possibilities. So I say, okay, like, how are you going to get money? Or how are you going to promote this? So we say, I'm going to play devil's advocate. In other words, I'm not going to just agree with you. I'm going to ask you questions. So you have to explain yourself. So a lot of people, sometimes I've noticed they get kind of like not sure when they have to explain themselves. But this is very, very common in like English business uh, and as well just in, in sharing ideas in English discussions. Okay, on to the next one. Time's going quick. To draw a blank, to draw a blank means to be unable to remember something. To be unable to remember something. A great visual, to remember something. A great visual for this is when someone asks you something and you think you've heard of it before, maybe you don't know, but you can't remember. It's like in your head, someone says like, hey, do you remember that English channel from the internet? You're like, uh, yes, but I can't remember, I can't remember. So in your head, you're like, this maybe you know, this symbol on like, uh, in like text. So you're reading text and there's a blank. Like I just drew a blank. There's something here that I can't remember. To draw a blank means to be unable to remember something. I can't remember this thing. Sorry, I'm drawing a blank on her name or I'm drawing a blank on that company. Means I can't remember it. In my mind, there's a blank space right there. To draw a blank. Okay, on to the next one. Another fire expression. To fight fire with fire. To fight fire with fire means to use the same weapon, or the same, well, let's go with weapon, to use the same weapon as your opponent. So, to fight fire with fire means to do the same thing as the person opposing you, as your enemy. So, this doesn't mean in, like, fighting, but it usually means in, like, arguments. So, for example, if your neighbor shouts at you and says, you're too noisy, then you might shout back. You use the same tactic, shouting, 
to say, well, you uh, stay up too late and make lots of noise. So to fight fire with fire means to use the same strategy in a competition or in a fight. To fight fire with fire. So if I use fire, my opponent will also use fire. To fight fire with fire. Okay, onward. We have lots to talk about still. To go viral. To go viral means to get very popular on the internet in a very short period of time. So like maybe a 24 hour period of time or something like that. To go viral. So my video went viral or this picture went viral. This went viral. We use it in past tense a lot. To go viral in past is we went viral. My video went viral. Something went viral. Okay. Is Facebook okay? Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Uh, I think YouTube is okay. Let's go then to this last one for this category. Hair of the dog. Hair of the dog. This is specifically used uh, in alcohol related situations. So the hair of the dog, that bit you, this is used uh, on the day after drinking. You have a really bad, what's called hangover, that feeling of you drank alcohol, you feel bad the next day. So we say to cure a hangover, try the hair of the dog that bit you. I don't have time to explain like the whole history of this phrase, but it means drink a little bit of the alcohol you had the night before to fix your hangover. The hair of the dog is alcohol. It means alcohol, a little bit of alcohol. Okay, on to, I guess we'll continue on. I think there might be an issue with the Facebook stream. Sorry about that, some kind of delay maybe, um, but I hope that it's okay. So I'm gonna continue on. I think YouTube is still okay, which is good. So let's continue to the last parts. The last ones are pretty quick, pretty quick expressions. First one is hands down. Hands down means no doubts, no doubts. So for example, hands down, she is the best actress. Or hands down, that was the best movie of last year. Hands down, that was the most amazing concert I've ever seen. That means no doubts. So the image here is like, like there's no hands, there's no other people suggesting something different. So that means there's no doubts, there's no other ideas. So hands down, we use it right before a strong opinion usually. So hands down, that was the best dinner you've ever made. No doubts, no doubts. All right, next one, not my cup of tea. Not my cup of tea means uh, I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it. So we use this to try to softly say we don't like something. So like cup of tea is, yes, a very simple kind of everyday thing. But when we say that's not my cup of tea, it means that's not what I prefer. That's not the thing that I like. It's not for me. So like uh, that movie wasn't my cup of tea or mm, I don't think that restaurant is my cup of tea. So it means maybe other people like it, that's fine, but it's not for me. I don't really like it very much. It's not my cup of tea. It's not my cup of tea. Alrighty, almost done. On the fence is the next one, on the fence. So on the fence, maybe let's add a visual here. Let's say that this is a fence. <laughs> So good at drawing. Okay, so on the fence, if we're here on the fence, let's imagine this is a person on top of the fence. This expression means not able to decide something. On the fence, so I can't decide. I can't decide. I'm on the fence about. We, use, we usually use the preposition about. I'm on the fence about something. Like, I'm on the fence about which place I should move to, or I'm on the fence about which job I should take. So when you have two options in a situation and you can't decide, oh, I should go this side or I should go this side, to be on the fence means to be unable to decide. We express our indecision with that. I don't know, uh, I don't know. So we say, I'm on the fence, I'm on the fence. 
Okay, last three, to read between the lines. To read between the lines is a very common expression. Imagine, as you're reading text, there are many lines in text. So in a book or in the newspaper, we have, this is one line or two lines of text. So as we read, we see this information. And in conversations, of course, in conversations, we don't have these lines, of course. So to read between the lines means to understand the meaning that is not being said. It's to understand the, re the meaning that's not being said. So I think uh, other, like I know an expression in, in Japanese is to read uh, the air, to read the air. This is the English version, to read between the lines. So that means to understand something that is not being said directly. Someone didn't directly say it, but we need to try to understand it. So like maybe a party host <laughs> is, it's late at night and there are still many people at the party. The party host starts to clean up maybe cleaning up from the party and you might say oh like let's read between the lines here the party host wants us to leave so they didn't say please leave but they're showing like it's time to go so to read between the lines means to understand something that's not said all right last two last two uh, this one is long, but I this is an interesting expression to me. I think about this expression a lot. The expression is to take the wind out of someone's sails. To take the wind out of someone's sails. The meaning of this expression is to cause someone to cause someone to lose confidence. So this is a great one for an image. I will draw very quickly. So this comes from like a boat. A sail, a sail on a boat, oh gosh, it's so hard to see, is the big sheet that a boat uses, an old boat uses, to move. So the boat needs wind, yeah? The wind is caught in the sail and that pushes the boat along. So to take the wind, so that means to remove the wind from someone's sail. So imagine a person, okay, imagine a person is a boat and you or someone removes the wind from that person's sails. That means you take their confidence away. Like they can't move or they feel stuck. You're taking away their motivation. So that's to take the wind out of someone's sails. Like, oh, my boss told me that my my work was bad last week. It's like, oh, he, like that person took the wind out of my sails. Like they took away my confidence. They took away my motivation. Or like I invited my friend uh, for coffee, but she just ignored my message. Like it took the wind out of my sails. So there's like a loss of confidence involved there. Okay, last one, phew, last one, hit the hay, easy one. I finished with an easy one. It means to go to sleep, to go to sleep. I'm gonna hit the hay means I'm gonna go to sleep. You might also know uh, hit the sack. Uh, that's another one that means uh, go to sleep. Leah, yes, stealing my thunder is a little bit different. Stealing my thunder means taking, uh, like taking over when someone else has an exciting moment. So like Kanye West taking over for Taylor Swift, or wasn't that? When he like was like, Beyonce did the greatest album. Okay, never mind. I'll, t I'll tell you later, Leah. Um, <laughs> so uh, these are some everyday English idioms that you can use at work, at school, at home. Uh, yes, to take the wind out of someone's sails is to demoralize them, person. All right, but I have to finish up today's lesson. If you are watching on Facebook, sorry, I think there might have been a little network problem there, but I hope it's okay. So we'll finish up there for today. Uh, thanks very much for sending lots of example questions or example sentences. Uh, we'll be back again next week. Next week, I'm going to talk about used to and would, used to and would. So next week will be August 28th. 
August 28th, uh, Wednesday, August 28th, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. There's an ST there. It should be TH, but uh, just for them, just so they know. Uh, that will be 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That is New York City time. If you don't know your local time, please Google it. <laughs> so, uh, so please join us to talk about used to. I'll talk a lot about like, distant past expressions. So how to explain like your childhood or maybe your school studies or whatever. So please join us again next week for that lesson. And I showed you a couple of these, the new, the new PDFs. If you haven't checked it out, there's a lot of new stuff to look at from the link below the video on YouTube and above the video on Facebook. So go get these. You can download these. These are free. Check them out. We'll finish there for today, though. So thanks very much for joining us. Don't forget to send some questions to Ask Alicia, please. And we'll see you again next week. Enjoy your week. Enjoy your weekend. Thanks for liking and sharing the video. And we'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.